Thanks, Tom, for the introduction. Yes, I belong to one of the banks. I haven't always been a banker, um, I must admit. Uh, I started off life in IT and spent about 13, 14 years volunteering and also in social services. Um, and then said yes to a job at BNZ because I wanted to be able to make some difference at a much larger scale um, than Auckland and Wellington and some other regional areas. So thank you for having me here today. Just a quick survey across the room. Um, how many small business um, people do we have here? Um, small medium enterprises. Yep. And uh, any large corporates? Yep. Uh, academia? Yep. Good. Excellent. And uh, others? Others? SBN? Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Good. Thanks, SBN, for hosting us here. It's always great. Um, hey. I just wanted to share a few thoughts with you today. I wanted to share a little bit about the programs that we have been running through, and also a few of the ideas that we've been subject to by our parent, NAB. Um, they've got some great global networks, some great research, and some interesting ideas that we've been thinking about and grappling with, and keen to share some of that with you, and also get some of your reflections too. So, uh, it's probably best starting off with a bit of a view about the way I see the world, because I see a change in the way that businesses and business leaders um, across New Zealand, but also globally, the way that they're talking about um, a whole lot of issues that relate to sustainability, both in terms of the topics they're choosing to talk about and also how vocal they are and the things that they're starting to commit to do. And I think over the past few years there's been a real sea change um, and I think that that's symbolic about a range of things. Um, there's a thought there. Um, also here in New Zealand, on our shores, there seems to be a bit of a blurring of form and also function. So we're seeing more not-for-profits thinking about scaling, thinking about intentional investment and growing. We're seeing large businesses looking at their social impact, how they can engage with community partners. We're, think we're seeing our government and government departments look at outcomes. And I think that that's indicative of a bunch of different stuff happening. And, um, and we also see some different trends with individuals. So, for example, we know that uh, four out of five of our own staff within the, B the walls of BNZ consider volunteering to be hugely important to them. We know that about 74% of New Zealanders, um, I think it's Colmar Brunson did some of the research, that says they would prefer to work for a socially and environmentally responsible organisations, so there's shifts in staff um, and what they want to do. And a really crazy statistic I saw uh, earlier in the year was that companies that are purpose-driven and purpose-led outperform their competitors in the categories by three times and their, their, their profits are generally four times higher. So some interesting and quite compelling statistics there. So. Yeah, a couple of things I wanted to do today was to share two of our programs, and thanks for the introduction, Julia. Um, and then also talk about shared value, which which uh, you touched on, Dom. So if we can switch to the next slide. If I can make this work. Good, good. Right back. Okay. So this little guy, a little bit about me. Uh, I saw a boy at, uh, last last week with my wife, and um, there's some stuff that cut pretty close to the bone there. It got a review that said funny, heartbreaking, and wonderful. How many people have seen that movie, by the way? Yeah, it's um, New Zealand's highest grossing film of all time. Maybe Hunt for the Wild People will, will um, displace that one, but those who thought it was funny, not, yeah, just a few. Heartbreaking, yeah, okay, wonder, wonderful. I thought it was wonderful. Um, I thought it was a story of hope, and that's how I like to approach a whole lot of the stuff really there's a whole lot of funny and heartbreaking stuff happening all the way across our country and around the world but really if we can approach it with a view of hope um, that's my own personal uh, view then then we can push through and shift a whole lot of stuff so if we flip to the next slide there we go, i have to do it for myself this is just a high level view of where i sit in the organization and some of the ooh, some of the things that we aspire to so at bnz it's our mission and our purpose to enable a high achieving New Zealand by helping New Zealanders be good with money. So that's a bit of a mantra that we talk about a lot within our four walls. Um, and something that personally inspires me and drives a whole lot of the stuff that we do. And within the corporate affairs function that I sit in, um, we've got a really big drive on reputation because we know 
if we've got a strong reputation, then our customers will uh, be happy to advocate for for us as a business um, if we're also giving them good customer experience. So, so it's it's an important thing for us as a business. Um, and there's two things that I'm deeply um, involved in: social good and sustainability. So, social good being the stuff where we can just give back to the community, no strings attached. And I'll touch on something in a second around that. And sustainability. That was something that our chief executives talking a lot more about and uh, and his recent speech at the Australia New Zealand Business um, Climate Change Conference in October was um, was touching on a lot of the things that we're thinking about there and why stuff matters and why for example climate change matters to a bank um, but that's probably a discussion for another day so close for good a uh, quick uh, feels like a, a survey today but how many people would recognize close for good and, and what it's about yeah yeah okay so it's just over half, and we know that about half of New Zealanders uh, understand what Close for Good is, but the two key reasons why we do it is because uh, it makes, we're told by community groups that we help every year, it makes a really big difference. There's a big brand awareness and connection with what we do at, at BNZ, and also staff engagement. Our staff love it. So every year for the past four years, as, long, as far back as I can go with the numbers, more than 3,000 of our staff have signed up to do it. It is and it will always remain voluntary. And the secret source is we tell everybody we're closing all of our 170 plus stores for a day all the way across the country on the same day. And then we take a punt. Um, I think it was Andrew Thorburn was a uh, previous CEO. He, he, put some, he put some of his courage on the line and said, um, we're just going to shut all of our stores. We're going to hope that community groups tell us what they want to do and then our staff can choose. So none of it's mandated, it's all voluntary, and it just seems to happen, and it keeps on going really well every year. And this year will be our seventh year. So one of the challenges for us is, if we went back to the slide previously, where we've got a mission to enable a high achieving New Zealand by helping New Zealanders be good with money, uh, how does our day align with that purpose? And that's a question that we've been, um, we've been pondering and thinking about a lot as we come into our seventh year. Um, and we can touch on that a little bit later on. Um, but we've also got the challenge that through our NAB, so, uh, because we're a subsidiary of NAB, every person in our organisation um, who's, who's a full-time staff member gets two volunteer days a year. So what do we do with the second volunteer day? And how does that align with our purpose? So there's a couple of questions there. Just wanted to give you a bit of the detail as well about how the, how the, the program's gone over the years. So here, here we've got, for the past four years running, it's been around th over 3,000 of our staff, 3,000 out of our 5,000 staff um, rock up on the day. We've got some people that we're still trying to track down because they just go out and they volunteer and they won't sign up in the system. We need to get a lot tighter on that because we've got the new health and safety stuff coming in, so we need to know where our people are. Um, but one of our key metrics as well is, we didn't have numbers back here in 2009, 2010, but this is our awareness as we go over time. So if you're in a large corporate or even a medium-sized corporate, one of the important things for us is if we keep on investing in particular areas, not only do we want to have a good impact, but we also want people to associate it with us because if they don't know about the good stuff we're doing, then either they, th they think we aren't doing it or, uh, or they might think, oh, those other guys are doing it, so we'll take their business there. And it's just as important for our own staff to know as well. So the two big things that we are focusing on with our own cons is both external stakeholders and making sure they're aware as well as the customers, but also our staff, um, because we have a wide range of activities that we do, as, as, I'm sure, as Dom alluded to, there's heaps of activity, so let's focus on a few key things and make sure that we can uh, prioritise those, focus those, and also um, give voice to those too. So that's close for good. The second one's community finance. I won't take a poll because I think it's probably less than one or two percent of people that actually know about this. But this was our commitment that we made um, about, stood it up about 18, 19 months ago, August 2014, and said, as a, as a bank, if we were to align some of our social good activity in ways that strategically align to our business and use our speci specific skills, resources, and abilities, what would it be? And Community finance, it's where we provide low or no interest loans to people who wouldn't normally meet normal bank criteria. So what practically happens in real life is they can't get a loan from the bank 
for a fridge or a car or something that they need for their family. So they might go to a third tier financier like a paid alienor or a loan shark and are paying quite high rates for, for that credit, either short term or, or long term if they can't keep paying it back. So what we did was we, we partnered with the uh, government, uh, Ministry of Social Development and also with uh, Good Shepherd Microfinance who've got 33 years of this experience over in Australia and we used some of the learnings from NAB, we've been doing this for over 10 years and, uh, and if you think about instead of procuring a service we're actually having to build a partnership this took a really, really long time to get off the ground so you're talking 18 months of thinking but longer and longer in terms of business case getting people to try and line up and we're still in the evaluation stage of uh, how successful is this being, what impacts are, are happening in the value. So there's a bunch of stuff we're doing, there's two examples of philanthropic uh, work in terms of what, what we, where we're giving back. There's also the concept of sponsorship which I won't jump into but Plunkett would be an example of, of that and what we've done. Corporate social responsibility, uh, all of the good things we're doing to align and make sure that the way we're operating is ethic, ethical and responsible. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff around sustainability. I've got five minutes. Five minutes, great. Um, but, but what's next? And what I wanted to do is spend a, just a few minutes talking through this idea of shared value because what we found was that not many people in New Zealand know about it and uh, we, for the first time in February, brought a panel over um, some people from Australia to talk about shared value, how it worked, what is it. Uh, because for us, we saw it as the next turn of the wheel of sustainability or corporate responsibility. So I'll just do a quick, a quick run through. Philanthropy, we're giving a lot away, giving a lot of ourselves, whether it's money, in-kind support, time, resources, what have you. Most of the benefit sits with the community when you do that. So I think close for good, we're going out and helping a lot of community groups. The value remains with the community group. Or if we're giving away money, whether you're just writing a cheque or whether you're committing to provide some funding over a reasonably long period of time. Yes, there's, there's glow that sits with the organisation off the back of it, reputation, communication, staff awareness, those sorts of things. But most of the value sits with the actual community group. If we think about corporate responsibility, We've got a lot of stuff that we do at BNZ, you know, LED light fits, we've got waste going to waste streams, there's a whole bunch of other stuff we're trying to do and you might make a business case for um, electric vehicles or a range of things. But really what happens is most of your benefits is and stays within your organisation. Here you can talk about your being ethical in terms of what you're doing to, to purchase and procure your goods, but, but the lion's share of it still sits with you. And in many cases there's Laws of diminishing returns around these. If you're trying to invest in, a, in an organisation that's delivering stuff to youth, and I've spent many years with, with, um, with youth and trying to get people into jobs and, uh, and, and also training, it's, it can be a bit of a, you have to put in another $100,000 to get that rich. Um, corporate responsibilities, sometimes you're seeing that diminishing returns happen. And this whole new idea is of, of shared value comes from the idea that what if you can identify new ways of doing business or you can identify ways of solving societal issues and also build a business model around it that allows you to bring profit in? The key concept being that if you can create a business model around it, it allows it to scale because you're not having to constantly go back to the donors to ask for more money or to the businesses to say, can you sponsor me some more? And some key examples of that will be is, uh, the Discovery Group over in, uh, South, uh, in um, South Africa, who recently presented at the Shared Valley Conference in Australia. Um, there's some other good examples that we've seen here in New Zealand. Eat My Lunch is a, is a great one. Buy a lunch and we give one. Um, and there's also some other examples that we've, we've looked back through BNZ and gone, actually that's an example of shared value. Um, Yeah, and one of, one of those is, is um, relates to the work that we've done in Christchurch after the earthquake and identified that there were tens of thousands of people who hadn't had their homes um, and their settlements fixed. Um, and so what some of the guys did was say, well, what if we set up a hub in Christchurch that brings together a whole lot of uh, skilled people from a range of different industries, pulls them together to help 
um, accelerate their sediment process. Now the challenge is over uh, many tens of thousands of people not having their issues settled. There's still something like 27,000 that haven't been fixed, but we've helped over 8,500 of those, and more than 800 of those aren't our customers. So there was a there was a an element of dipping our toe in the water with with that piece of shared value. Um, the ch the challenges and and it was to Dom's point as well is measurement. So really, if we're looking at shared value initiatives, it's easy to work out if you're making money because you can see at the end of the month or at the end of the year how profitable you've been. But how do we build? And this is a challenge to all of us. How do we build a community? of government, academia, NGOs, that we can identify some societal issues and then actually work out what are measures that we can do to judge our success as we go through. Um, and that's something that I'm, I'm keenly aware that we have a challenge around and it's something that I know we need to address and identify and build up in order to move forward quicker in this area. So that's shared value, keen to take some questions on that. What are next steps for us at BNZ? One I know is uh, the challenge for me and my team is to keep focused. There are so many good things that we could be doing, but we need to hone in on three or four and really give those a good push. Um, Close for Good will be one that we keep and remain, um, remain working with, with some key focuses around how do we keep aligning it with high achieving New Zealand, and that's going to look like more skilled volunteering. Um, be good with money, is, there's going to be financial literacy involved there in different shapes or form, and shared value initiatives. So particularly what areas line up with our business key skills, abilities, resources, um, and that's uh, for more internal discussion for us. So, there we go. Thank you very much.